Hello everyone, my name is ODI Seth, and in the previous video for my Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Randomizer, I encountered a bit of a softlock and promised that I would teach you how I got around it. Uh, and this is all coming straight from Paracoupa, uh, who is the developer of Sky Temple, and uh, he, he and I worked together at the beta testing kind of channel to try and figure out exactly what was going on for a bit. Uh, but, essentially, within the code for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, there is a call command, a call opcode. And according to Paracoupa, it jumps to a relative opcode in the same script file and adds the address of the call to their stack so the return returns the call command afterward. Uh, There's a problem because the Explorer script decompiler can't handle them at the moment. It will just strip away the seemingly unreachable opcodes that are after the end of the routine, uh, which causes, you know, the glitches and soft locks that we experienced in, those, in the video yesterday. But thankfully, we found a workaround for it. Uh, we just have to simply delete those call commands. So, if you aren't familiar with Sky Temple, you don't know how to do that, I'm here to help you with that. So first of all, make sure you have Sky Temple. You can download Sky Temple from skytemple.org, the same place that you uh, downloaded the randomizer. Uh, it's just the big download button right up here. Hit the download button for actual Sky Temple. Go ahead and install it the same way that I told you how to install the randomizer in the previous video. And then you're going to want to open whatever ROM you want to actually modify. I'm going to randomize one of the older copies of my randomized ROM, uh, simply because I don't want to... I've already done it for the modern ones, and I want to make sure it's a clean one that has the issue. So we're going to uh, go ahead, open up the ROM right here, and then almost immediately we're going to go ahead and ignore everything on this main screen of the ROM. It will have whatever name you want. Uh, go ahead and hit this script editor slash debugger. This picture of a bug up in the top right. It's going to bring up a separate window right here that's called the Sky Temple Script Engine Debugger. And boom, so this is where all the magic happens for the code and everything. So in order to show you kind of what I'm talking about, it comes with an emulator. So we can go ahead and pull up the emulator and I can show you exactly how you can double check to make sure you did this right. That said, the emulator within Sky Temple itself is not the best. It's a little bit slow. So uh, try not to use this for the actual game. Use a better emulator for it. This is purely for debugging sake. So, speaking of purely for debugging sake, it's going to go ahead and bring up the debug screen right on the start. You're going to want to hit no. I'm going to make a save state so I can return here just to prove it uh, in the future. But you're going to want to go over to main 16. Uh, go ahead and actually click on main 16. And it will bring up this chapter 13 part. Now, if you remember, chapter 13, sh very shortly after where chapter 13 happened, is where we encounter the issue. And I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Because... This is the scene that had the issue, right? It was loading up M16A0102.SSB. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that, we're going to copy it, put it right in here. Boom. So double click on what we find up right here. It's an acting script. So it's going to go ahead and try to load the acting script for this scene. And this is all the secret code that goes on behind the scenes for this scene. Now, if we want to find wherever the issue occurs, in fact, you know what, let's just play through it until we find the issue. Now, obviously, your randomization might look different from mine. I've got various different characters, uh, so don't worry about the actual Pokemon on screen. They are not important. What is important is right here in this part of the scene. You can see that the same issue is going to occur in the debugger as what happened in the actual video I was recording through DSMUME, which I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. But So we get to the zit, everyone is here zit, and then it crashes hard. In fact, this speci this specific debugger, it's able to go just a little bit further and bring up the text for Dark Losh, but then it crashes there. So what we're going to do, we're going to want to pause it, uh, end it, because we, we don't need it to be running anymore. So we're going to try and find where that crash happened. Do that, we can do... Everyone is here, which we can go ahead and see that is line 592 in this specific script. So we have everyone is here, and we have a few different elements right underneath it. And the problematic element, according to Paracoupa, is this call sign. This call command fucks everything up. So what you're going to want to do is delete it. But the problem is every call command in the entire game is going to have this issue. Thankfully, there are only a handful of call commands, and they're only in two different scenes. So you only need to take care of all the call commands in two different scenes. So what we can go ahead and do, and specifically I want to point out that we're not doing the call common. These scenes are fine. Go ahead and leave those commands in. But call open parentheses. This will go ahead and highlight all of the call commands that we need to delete. So there's one, there's two, there's three and four right here, five, six down here, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. 
and that is it. So there are 13 total if you include the one that I, I deleted before I started counting. 13 total call commands. And if you delete all of them, you'll be able to get through the scene without any issues. Now we've deleted all of those call commands. This should go ahead and start working. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this specific, uh, this specific part of the script. This is the script for this specific scene. And, but note, we're not done yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the debug and show you why we're not done. That is not the button I wanted to push. So in this debug menu, we're back at the home screen. We're gonna go ahead at main 16, which is the same uh, thing as you could see. And so right now it's calling on a 0101. And now it's skipping over to 0102, which is this scene that we just edited right here. Don't worry about the sound in the emulator. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the sound off. Uh, this emulator has some problems. Like I said, don't use it for actually playing the game. Uh, the more you use it, the more the sound specifically gets messed up and the game just starts to lag. But don't worry about that. That is not the issue we're trying to fix here, nor is it an issue you will experience in any other emulator. That is only an issue you'll experience here. All right, and to prove that this works. So we are back at the scene. They're doing the same conversations. The The big old bear is saying everyone is here and it doesn't crash. We continue with the conversation. Now the crowd is still doing their shenanigans. That's because the call commands are designed to manipulate the crowd and make them do different things. But don't worry, it's not that big of an issue. As long as you're willing to tolerate the crowd just kind of being rude and obnoxious and kind of talking amongst themselves during this whole speech, uh, it's fine. It's not gonna be that bad. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the music back off because it's getting a bit uh, obnoxious again. But the reason I'm continuing with the scene, okay, so they're talking about the planet's paralysis right now. And I want you to pay attention to this debug log down here at the bottom when they actually move on to talking about the planet's paralysis. So, so if the planet is paralyzed, what happens to this world? In a world where the planet has become paralyzed, stop. See what just happened down there? We're now in an M16-0103. This is a different scene now. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with the scene just for a little bit and kind of demonstrate something for you. All right, so that just ended, and now we've loaded up M16A0104, which is once again a completely different scene, but it still has all the same actors, and it still has all the same actors in the same positions, which I'm gonna turn the music back on so you can see what happens for sure. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue with the scene, and we encounter the same crash. Now, of course, it, it brings up different text because it's a different scene, but, we're going to encounter the same crash as a result of the same issue in a different scene. So thankfully, these are the only two scenes that have this issue, but so we have M16A0102.SSB and M16A0104.SSB. These are two scenes that we have issues with. So remember the same issue? Call, open parenthesis, and just go ahead and delete all the call open parentheses. So we got two right here, third one down here, fourth, fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, a ninth, a tenth, an eleventh, and that is all. So we have the eleven different call commands within uh, M16A0104. Go ahead and save that. And now, okay, so I'm reloading that specific scene. And now we're back at this specific scene. So look again, we're back at M16A0104. Oh, I didn't mean to pause it. It's going, it's going. And we are not encountering those same issues. We're, we're still having scenes where the entire crowd would be manipulated, they'd be changed and stuff like that through those call commands, but they're not because we deleted those call commands and we're not encountering those crashes. We're not encountering those soft locks. So thankfully, as far as I know, and as far as Paracoupa is aware, these two scenes, uh, M16A0102 and M16A0104 are the only two scenes in the entire game with those call commands that are going to cause an issue. So if you delete those commands from these two scenes, you will not have this issue again. Those are the only places that can cause this specific soft lock. Now, that's not to say there might not be other issues in the future. Uh, I believe I was the first one to actually encounter this issue and report it. So I may encounter more issues in the future later in the game that we're just not aware of right now. But as far as the randomizer goes, and as far as the Sky Temple script engine debugger goes, uh, this is this is an issue that I believe every copy of the game is going to have, and it's an issue that can be pretty easily fixed simply by removing a few lines of code. You don't even have to be smart at coding. You just need to be able to find, uh, copy, paste, and delete. That is it. Oh yeah, and if you don't know how to find, we can go to edit, find. I was using control F. I realized that I probably should have told you that. Uh, I'm familiar with Word documents, so control F makes sense to me. But yeah, that is all. That is all you need to do to resolve this issue. And in fact, I'm going, I'm so confident that's going to resolve that issue. Uh, we can go ahead, 
close that, open up that very same ROM in any other actual emulator. In fact, if you remember, this is zero one. 1.0.0 randomized PMD any don't don't judge how I name my files okay they work for me don't don't judge it but we can go ahead and open up that file and I happen to have a, a save state from right before that soft lock so and you can go ahead and see in this ROM that we literally just edited we're back at that same issue part he's gonna say the line everyone is here and we're not gonna disappear we're not gonna soft lock they're not gonna make any changes but because we deleted those call commands this is working fine so i'm gonna use that opportunity to thank you all for watching uh shout out to the sky temple discord and paracoopa specifically because let's be honest i would have not been able to figure that out myself and the fact that the sky temple uh rom editing community for pokemon mystery dungeon is so vast and so willing to help like it, it blows my mind so highly advise joining their discord uh, and asking any questions you may have. Seriously, they're they're incredibly kind, and they have so many answers to questions that you might not have ever thought you would have had in regard to this game. So if you ever encounter other issues or anything like that, ask here. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you don't have to encounter another issue like that again. Uh, but if there's any that I encounter, feature in a video, and then specifically say, I'm going to show you how to fix this, I'm going to show you how to fix this. So hopefully you don't encounter this issue yourself. Thank you and have a fantastic rest of the day.